or is it that? I don't know. Or maybe it's this. Good evening, everybody. I hope everyone's doing well today. Now, I personally, I think it should be the one finger salute when doing it to Keir Starmer. That way, you can show that, or actually, it should probably be more like that. <laughs> but anyway, enough about how to salute people of different types. I want to talk about two things. First and foremost, I want to call out the lies set out by the traitor Mark Rowley, who effectively is saying there is no two-tier policing. Oh, it's easy to throw bias out there because we're in the middle. No, it's not like that at all. The reason they are saying that there is two-tier policing is because there is two-tier policing. You can't hide the truth from the British people anymore, Mark. If you honestly believe that there is no such thing as two-tier policing, then I recommend you get yourself checked out from the neck up. Because we have so many bits of footage where it clearly showcases the police can't be fucked to turn up when it's Muslims or when it's pro plasticine going out of their way to protest. And sometimes arrests are not even made as far as those people are concerned, even though some of them are blatantly holding and waving around machetes, which last time I checked, wasn't it against the law to hold a knife, let alone a machete? Then of course, we have what happened in Manchester Airport, where basically two Muller Rices went in and attacked the police, gave one of the female officers a broken nose. Now last time I checked, I'm pretty sure that would be classed as violence, as well as obviously, of course, assaulting a police officer. Yet it was only the person who stamped on their heads whether rightly or not is irrelevant here, since we're not here to discuss the police officer, especially considering he had to act in a high-risk situation, shall we say, when you're in an airport and the police are armed. But back on point, these mullahs attacked the police. All charges dropped against the Muller Rices, who clearly committed violence and assaulted the police officers. And now there's someone who I think is named Duncan Drumswood or something like that. Bear this in mind, Duncan Drumswood, white person, convicted of violent disorder in Southport. He was sentenced to three years in prison for attacking a police officer. Now let me be clear, if you attack a police officer, then you have sunk to basically the levels that Islam have. You've made yourself a worse man by attacking the police, whether they be innocent or not. So yes, I will condemn that man for attacking the officer. But here's the thing, why is it the Muller Rices did not get charged and sent to prison for doing arguably a lot worse than what this one man did. I'll tell you why. It's because it's the religion of Islam. It's because the police are too spineless to act against them for fear of being called racists. And all this in spite of the fact you can't be racist against a religion. That would be the same as if I was a Christian and I cried racism, my argument would be pointless because being a Christian, Christians are not a race. They are part of a religion. Just like Buddhists are part of Buddhism, vice versa, etc, etc, etc. But we have Mullah Rices who are waving weapons around, no charges brought against them. Patriots, on the other hand, who are simply walking down the pavement, as I'm currently doing now, they're getting arrested, including a 73-year-old woman with a pacemaker in her heart. She got arrested for simply existing. When Islam goes marching down the streets of London, or any other town that they deem fit, they don't get the iron fist treatment that we do. They end up getting kid gloves. And one of the people who even brought some of the weapons around, when the police went up to them, the police said, and I quote, can you take your weapons back 
to the mosques. End quote. But of course, the mainstream media won't tell you this. You know the drill, folks, because say it with me, it doesn't suit the narrative. Now, let's face it. If we had weapons in our hands, like, let's say for the, for the sakes of argument, I went to one of these protests and I was carrying a fuck off great big sword. Let's just say that for the sakes of argument. Do you think the police would be telling me to return that to the church? Or do you think they return it to my home? Or do you think they would, or should, quite rightly, confiscate my weapon, arrest me on charges of possessing a, an offensive deadly weapon, and have me locked up for the years to come? I think we all realistically know what would happen. It would end up with me not being able to post videos for the next three plus years. But Islam, they get a free pass. And they're told, yeah, you can keep your weapons. Just return them to the mosques. No, you should be taking them away from these fuckers. It's like if you have a child who suddenly managed to get a hold of a knife or a dangerous sharp object and they're coming after you. The parent's not gonna be like, put the weapon away. No, they're gonna take the shit away. They're gonna child, they're gonna, what is it? Child block the drawers or what have you. Basically put measures in to make sure he can't get it again. So surely logic says that the police would take the weapons away and whether or not they face protests from Islam, they shouldn't give in. Because at the end of the day, they need to conform to our society, not the other way round. But here is a traitor in Mark Rowley who thinks there's no two-tier policing. I think we can all come to our own conclusions after the examples I've given. Oh, but I almost forgot to put in the, the main point, the main subject of those protests. Islam gets treated with kid gloves when they're being violent thugs and an actual threat, but ordinary concerned parents, children, patriots, elderly, the, then the police are tough. Then they bring in the horse guards. Then they bring in the guard dogs. Then they bring in the riot squads. And they have absolutely no problems with beating the shit out of people they perceive as far right. And this fucker of a metropolitan chief has the audacity to say there's no two-tier policing in this country. I don't know about you, but there's a funny smell in the air. And I don't think it's primrose. I think it's... It smells like the stuff that comes out your ass. And I'll let you fill in the blanks with that one. But enough about Mark Rowley. And I'm not even going to talk about Keir the Traitor Starmer. Or at least not as the main point of focus, because at the end of the day, I'm surprised he hasn't turned to charcoal with the amount of grilling I've done on him. No, I want to talk about Nigel Farage this time, because he has recently put out a video, which as soon as I get home, I'm going to link it in the description below. There is a video that he put out. Basically, he, Nigel Farage, went out of his way to say that the Tommy Robinsons are generally stirring up hatred and violence. Leader of reform, folks. I want to support Nigel Farage, but after this shit, I have no respect left. I, I really don't want to be like this, quite frankly, but Nigel Farage, uh, Farage has committed a grave error because now he's opening himself up to libel and slander from the ordinary indigenous British patriots. He was very eager and very quick to put legal action threats against the mainstream media when they were trying to basically slander his name 
How long do you think you're gonna last, Nigel Farage? If, I don't know, a thousand people decide to put libel and slander cases against you, hmm? Something tells me you're not gonna last very long at all. Because what Nigel Farage is implying is that we British paper patriots, who the media often label as far right, basically are going out of their way. He's going out of his way to label us as the people who are instigating these riots. If Nigel Farage had even done two minutes of research and looked at the most recent videos that Tommy Robinson has put out, he would know for a fact that Tommy has advocated for peace, not violence. He has told people not to go out and cause violence, not to cause riots, not to attack the police, not to cause criminal damage. But Nigel Farage ignores all of that and just says, oh, he's stirring up hatred and violence. Shame on you, Nigel Farage. Shame on you. Now, of course, I do also have to play the side of devil's advocate here because there is something that I do want to bring up, much as I am loath to say it, but maybe Nigel Farage is doing it because he wants to avoid the wrath of the establishment. You could make a point of that and it makes sense, again, much as I am loath to say it. It makes sense when you think about it from that perspective, because obviously he's now in the Houses of Treachery. I mean Parliament, or maybe I was right first time. He is in the Houses of Treachery, and at the end of the day, I suspect he doesn't want to do anything that would jeopardise his position in there, because he's not going to be able to hold Keir the traitor Starmer or his cronies, such as Angela Rayner or Jess Phillips, to account if he's outside of that place. He's not going to be able to put the tough questions to these traitors if he's outside of Parliament. So yes, I can see it from both sides, which is something the mainstream media will never be bothered to do. They will never try to put out impartial, unbiased, factual reporting. They would rather go on the narrative of, oh, far right man or woman bad. But here's what it boils down to. Nigel Farage is going to alienate a lot of people with this narrative that he's done. He is going to basically cause a lot of voters to go off of him on the back of this. Single to St. Augustine's, please. And da, 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 da. Thank you. But he's basically going to cause a lot of voters to go off of him because he hasn't got the balls to call this out for what it is. He doesn't have the balls to do the research on Tommy Robinson. That's what it comes down to. He is basically going to destroy his chances of getting into power the more he does this. Like I said, I do accept that there is a need to play the game, as it were. To play the game of being in the establishment. And maybe you could give the argument that he has controlled opposition. But I do understand at the end of the day that if he starts siding with Tommy Robinson, he is going to have every single politician in those houses of treachery go after him. But I think eventually, Nigel Farage, you're going to have to face the music and you are going to have to grow a pair of balls, whether up here or down there, or in my case, both, to actually call this out for what it is and admit that Tommy Robinson is not the person who is inciting these violent outbreaks, the riots, the looting, the attacks on the police. He's going to have to admit it sooner or later, as much as he probably don't, he doesn't want to. Tommy Robinson's even categorically said, you don't have to support him. Just stop lying about him.
Nigel Farage. Because as I said, by saying what you've done now, that he's stirring up hatred, or the Tommy Robinsons, which a lot of people often say, we are all Tommy Robinson. You're basically slandering every single one of them. How long, as I said, I'll ask the question again, how long do you think you'll last in a court when you have maybe even just a hundred people claiming libel and slander against you? Just putting it out there, Farage, because these people are not far right. They are not, most of them aren't anyway, thugs. Most of the people who are protesting are doing this correctly through the peaceful channels, and they are doing it rationally, and they are not far right. They are concerned patriots, concerned parents, who want to make sure their kids are able to grow up in this country. You may not want to admit that, but that's the cold bitter truth that everyone has to swallow sooner rather than later. Hell, I feel a little bit bad about this bit as well, which I'm going to bring up, which I don't have to, but I actually have a friend who lives close to where I am, who, not that close, I mean, we're talking like a couple of hundred miles away, but I have a close friend who wanted to go to the protests that's happening in Lincoln, who I feel bad for saying, be careful, I think the police are plotting, uh, planning all these organised protests to, to draw out the religion of peace, as it were, to basically get the violence they need so that they can bring in these draconian laws that prevent people from protesting. Fascism, basically. They want to bring in draconian laws that make it so you can't go on protests to silence all polit uh, political, political opposition so that basically, Keir the traitor Starmer can keep his Islamic vote while everyone else is not allowed to speak. I felt bad having to tell her to be careful. I, I want to support her doing this shit, but I do care for her because at the end of the day, I don't want to see her arrested like the 73-year-old pacemaker woman was in London. Do I feel bad about it? Yeah, I do. But at the end of the day, I do also look after my friends at the same time, who may not have the experience that I have. Who may not have the experience like Tommy Robinson, or Maya Tuzzi, or Richard Thorpe, or, or, sorry, Richard Thorpe? I meant Richard Inman, Paul Thorpe. You know what I mean, who I mean. But these people have been doing this for the last 10, 20 years. I don't know how long my friend here has done it for. Even I'm relatively inexperienced, because I only started doing my political activism six years ago. But like I said, I think Nigel Farage has personally made a mistake here, and I've lost a great deal of respect for him on the back of those comments that he made about Tommy Robinson. Libelous, slanderous remarks, in my opinion, that he better be real careful now, because he's now in a minefield. He is in a minefield and he's got no fucking metal detector to help him out here. If he makes one wrong step now, court case just like that, for his libel and slander against us. I think what he needs to do at this point is he needs to openly apologize to Tommy Robinson now, 100%. I know I said it before, but now even more so, he 100% needs to come out and apologize for those remarks. I suspect he won't, but one can hope, because at the end of the day, I think Nigel is going to do so much harm to himself if he does not apologise, because he's going to lose so many people. Like, let me tell you something, there was at least 75,000 people who attended the 27th of, uh, 27th of July rally in Trafalgar Square. The vast majority of those people... I'd probably say at least 75% of them, and that's probably being generous if we were to lowball it. 75% of them all voted reform, including myself. I think Nigel is going to demonize and alienate the vast majority of his voters 
if he keeps this up. I think he's going to end up in a position where he may have gotten 5 million votes this year, but if he keeps this up, next time he's probably only going to get a fraction of that, quite frankly. He needs to understand that he is just as vulnerable to being taken to task for this as any other politician. He called us all far-right knuckle-dragging thugs in the past. And I think now, it almost feels like he's doubled down on that. The way I look at it, as in Tommy's own words, you may, you don't have to support us, Nigel Farage, but stop lying about us, because we're not far-right. We're ordinary people who have had enough of the treachery and deceit from the government, the media, the two-tier policing, the two-tier lawfare that is going on between the Islamic community and ordinary people. We've had enough. Why do you think you are seeing so many protests going around the country? London, Plymouth, Stoke-on-Trent, Birmingham, Manchester, Southport, Lincoln, I could go on, but my point is, all of these protests are taking place not because of Tommy Robinson, they're taking place because of our traitorous media, government and police. 20 plus, if not more years, of tensions boiling over because our government and our police continue to persecute us or not enact the will of the British people. That's why they're pissed. What happened in Southport was not the main instigating factor of all this shit, but what it is was the catalyst for all of this going off. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. When tempers were at their highest point, that thing came in and tempers boiled over just like that. That's what caused it. You don't want to admit mainstream media that your treacherous reporting your activism because it's not journalism it's activism when you refuse to tell the truth and report things based off of facts not fiction it's what happens when the police take a kid gloves approach when it comes down to islam but an iron fist approach to ordinary people that's why people are angry. But Keir the traitor Starmer would rather fuck off to holiday to whichever country he's gone to rather than man up and admit his mistakes and say, I am sorry for putting you all through this. I believe it's a mistake to bring in the draconian laws that I want to bring in and admit that he has stoked the flames of these protests through said actions, he is running away, just like the police did in Hare Hills. They ran away from Islam, but they will beat the shit out of ordinary patriots. They ran away from Black Lives Matter and pro plasticity but they're, they're really tough when it comes down to cracking down on women, on the elderly and infirm, and ordinary people who just care too much, perhaps, uh, or is there such a thing as that, but care too much about their country. This isn't a matter of, oh, we're all a bunch of racists. Far from it. We would love to be able to integrate with everyone, but the trouble is, some of the people that you're bringing over to this country through mass immigration do not want to integrate with us. They want to subjugate and dominate us. And that is what the warrior religion of Islam does. They conquer. They don't integrate, they conquer. Which is something the mainstream media will not tell you. And why do you think I've gotten so bold as to say this shit on a, on a bus right now full of people, some of which may well be Muslim for all I know. I don't know that for sure. But they could be. 
But why do I say that? It's because I'm not afraid to speak the truth. I'm not going to bullshit anyone, or I'll try my best not to. I don't sugarcoat anything, and I'm not going to mince my words. And I'm not afraid to let some of the people on this bus hear the cold, bitter truth. Because they need to, at the end of the day. Keir the traitor Starmer needs to be serving all of the British public, not one section of it, like he's trying to do now. Because that's what these draconian laws boil down to. Thank you. The way I look at it is that Keir Starmer is going to end up invoking civil war in this country, which none of us want. I've made it very clear over many, many, many videos and live streams, I am not going to advocate for a violent revolution or people to protest and commit acts of violence, attack the police, go around looting, commit criminal damage. I am never going to advocate for that. The only thing I have ever said is I completely understand why people feel this angry, why they feel this way why they're doing what they're doing. There is a big difference between understanding and sympathizing. A very big difference between encouraging this shit and actually saying, no, I'm not gonna condone it. I condemn their actions, as I've always done. I'll condemn, condemn each and every one of the people that's doing it, but I understand why they're doing it. And you, Nigel Farage, need to start understanding that we're not the enemy. The real far right is radical Islam. The real far right are youths who are impulsive and want to commit violence on their own volition, that are easily, shall we say, riled up. Easily riled up and are looking for a fight. We don't want people doing that. Islam does. The Islam youth have proven their point when they're going out of their way to attack people. When Islam is running around with machetes and swords and going around attacking isolated white men while the police do fuck all about it. While the police have their hands at their asses and they say, we will come down with the full force of the law on the supposed far right. How about doing your fucking job? Hmm? Is that too hard? What about you, Keir the Traitor Starmer? Is it too hard to take the boats and send them back? Is it too hard to get rid of the illegal immigrants that have no legal or human right to be here, especially the ones that are committing crimes here in the United Kingdom? Is that too much to ask? I guess so, because otherwise you would have fucking done it by now. The way I look at this is that we are heading towards civil war. We are potentially heading towards a violent revolution, but it won't be the far right that cause it. It'll be the knee-jerk reaction that Keir the traitor Starmer has shown time and time again, where he basically wants to bring in draconian laws to stop genuine protests and political dissidents, I guess, from being able to have a voice and be able to share their opinion. Unequivocal definition of fascism. Well, if he keeps this up, Maybe he will get what he wants, but he's not going to like the result that comes afterwards, which is going to involve the army being brought in, most of the army being on the people's side, because that's what they're meant to do. They're meant to protect the people, not the politicians. And we're going to see, perhaps, if worse comes to worse, the army and the British people start to take out the trash, metaphorically speaking. We will place these people in the dumpster of history where they rightfully belong. And if Keir the traitor Starmer wants a war, he is going to end up with millions of people's blood on his hands. And as I've already said, there are already locals here who think Keir the traitor Starmer is the biggest traitor that this country has ever had in its entire history. You have a choice, Keir Starmer. Ring, bring your neck in. Or you can face the full fury of the British people as they take you to task for your treacherous actions against them.